my name is Shalita, the nonprofit Easter O'Neill, and I'm coming to you today to tell you the 10 things you should know before you start your nonprofit organization. You might be asking, well, how do I know the 10 things you should know? Where did I learn it? Who am I to tell you anything? Well, for the past 10 years, I've run my own nonprofit, an organization that I started from the ground up, and I've learned a lot of things from that whole process. I've also done a lot of work with other nonprofits, helping them to raise money, develop programmings and such. So through my process and, my, and, the, and over the years of, of everything that I've seen and everything that I've learned, I want to be able to pass those lessons on to people like you who are trying to start their own nonprofit organizations and may not know where to go, how to do it. Maybe it's something you've been thinking about for a long time and you have convinced yourself or allowed other people to convince you that you shouldn't do it. And I'm here to tell you that you can and how you can do it. But before you start thinking about the logistics of your nonprofit, you know, name and mission and things like that, you have to know what are some things that you should really be aware of before you even get to that point. So the first thing is yourself. You're also going to need to know your why. You're going to need to know and understand that not everybody is going to understand your vision. There's no new idea under the sun, number four. Okay. Number five, collaboration is necessary. Number six, it takes a village. Number seven, you have to know the landscape. Number eight, should it be a for-profit? Number nine, all you need is one yes. And number 10, it is a commitment. So going back to number one, knowing yourself, okay? So first and foremost, you need to understand, well, what are your values? What, what, what do you believe in? What's your belief system? What are your limits? A lot of people think, Starting a nonprofit is external, but honestly, you have to start with yourself. It's an internal process. Why do you have this vision? And what do you plan to do with it? You know, through this process, you're going to need to be willing to grow and to evolve. There might be some things, some beliefs that you have now that may not serve you as you grow into a nonprofit visionary, someone who is leading an organization that's going to change the world. And you really have to think of it that way. Okay, it's not something that's small that no one's going to care about. No, shift your thinking and make sure you put effort into your mindset because what you're about to embark upon, if you choose to do so, is really going to change the world and change how things are done. And everything that you approach and everything that you do with this organization, that should be where you come from. So know yourself, okay? Know yourself. Second, you have to know what your why is. And that's with anything, whether you're starting a nonprofit, for-profit, whatever journey, let's say, you're embarking upon, you have to understand your why because things will get hard, okay? Are you doing this for yourself? Is it about your own ego? Do you want people to see you and what you're doing or prove somebody wrong, you know, that you want to, if I start a nonprofit and I do this, they're going to see me and they're going to know that I'm, you know, everything they said I wasn't. If that's the reason, that maybe you shouldn't start a nonprofit. Is this about you or is it really about the community? Is it really about improving the world? Is it really about creating change? Because if it is about that, then understand you're going to have to humble yourself in certain situations. And you're going to need to think through if it's really about the community or let's say you're starting or you're, you're, what you want your mission to be is going to address an issue that affected someone that you really care about. Maybe what you are about to offer is something that they needed and they didn't have it. Whoever that person is, make that personal connection because there are going to be times when you want to give up. There are going to be high highs and low lows. And you need to remember why you started this organization. And it has to be external to you because we give up on ourselves all the time. Let's be real about it. Oh, I'm going to work out. Oh, I'm going to uh, uh, change how I eat. And then you turn around and, oh, well, I won't notice. <laughs> or nobody else will notice. I made this promise to myself and I didn't share it. So nobody else is going to hold me accountable for it. So maybe I'll start next week. And the next week becomes the next week. And the next week becomes the next month. 
and then it becomes the new year's resolution the same one that you had last year so it has to be external to you and others have to know that this is something that you're pursuing something that you won't give up on right that's number two your why number three not everybody is going to understand your vision i'm going to say it again not everybody is going to understand your vision i had to learn this the hard way when i first started my nonprofit like I said, 10 years ago, and I was going to different people who I respected. Some of them were mentors to me that I learned from, you know, that I just knew were going to support me and be as excited about what I wanted to do as I was. And I was disappointed. And some people would try to talk me out of it and say, oh, well, you know, that's a pretty big vision. Maybe you're not ready for that. You're too young for that. You're too this for that. It's, you gotta raise money. You don't have the money for that. I've heard so many different things from different people and, and, and be prepared. It typically comes from the people that are closest to you. What I say to you is don't let that deter you. Don't let that discourage you. Look at their life. Do you want it? Look at the dreams, if they've even shared that with you. Their own dreams, their own goals. Are they reaching their own goals? Are they smashing their goals? You know, are they, are they, out here achieving their dreams and, and the things that they've put into place? Do they have expertise in starting a nonprofit or starting anything? If the answer is no, disregard that opinion. And even if the answer is yes, this is a vision that was given to you and to you alone. Don't let anybody deter you from it because I promise you, if you let other people dictate what you're going to do and, and tell you what makes sense and what doesn't, this vision is not going to go away. And many of you watching this know it will wake you up in the middle of the night. You'll daydream about it during the day. Something that someone says will remind you of it. It will not go away. So the best thing to do is to embrace it and take the first step forward. All right. So that's number three. Number four. There's no new idea under the sun. Believe me, your idea is not new. However, how you execute it and the flavor, as I like to say, that you bring to it is your own. And that is what makes it different. That is what makes it special. You have to find your niche. So part of this is researching. Okay, and I'll say this, I say this all the time, research. What does the landscape look like? And we'll get to that later too. But four, there is nothing new under the sun. Your idea, I'm sure someone else has thought about it, but again, what you bring to it will be different. Bring yourself to it. Don't try to imitate. Some people will start an organization and mimic it, cookie cutter, right after another organization that's already in existence. And that does not work. You set yourself up for failure when you do that. Even outside of being a nonprofit visionary, outside of starting a nonprofit, in anything that you do, be authentic. Be true to who you are because you matter. And what you have to bring, no one else in this world can bring it the way you can. So be real about that. You know, confront that. Sit with that. Be okay with that. You are enough. And what you have to bring to this world and this nonprofit is going to make it so that no one else has the same sort of flavor, okay? So embrace that, don't imitate, but create, create your own. And not to say recreate the wheel. I'm a firm believer, I do not like to recreate the wheel. What I like to say, I don't recreate the wheel, I just wanna put some rims on it, okay? Put some rims on a wheel, you don't have to recreate it. Other somebody else, again, there's no new idea under the sun, so somebody else might be doing something similar, similar. It's the word. It's like, oh, that's a good idea. Let me add this. Put it in a pot. Stir it around. Put some seasoning on it. And then it's your souffle. It's your cuisine. Okay? Number five, collaboration is necessary. I know, I know, I know, I know what you're thinking. You don't want to collaborate with nobody. You don't trust anyone. You've heard all this about other people don't want to collaborate. You don't want anybody to steal your idea. This and this and that. Okay, great. I get it. I understand. But you are going to need to collaborate with someone at some point around your nonprofit organization. There's a thing about trust that all of us have. Again, we can liken this journey, this nonprofit visionary journey to anything that you do in life. 
we have a trust issue. A lot of people have trust issues, some more severe than others, but all of us are kind of, you know, looking at everything with a side eye, which is healthy, you know, but at the same token, you're going to need to identify someone that you can trust that you're going to collaborate with. You don't need to collaborate with everybody, but you will need to collaborate with someone. And there's a process by which you do that. And there's a way to vet people. But I've gotten as far as I have with my nonprofit and it had survived 10 years and, and into an acquisition by collaborating and finding how can you add to what someone else is doing and how can they add to what you're doing so that you can join together in a symbiotic situation or partnership. If you don't like people, you don't trust anyone and you don't want to collaborate and you decide to start a nonprofit organization, understand that you will be in a bubble and your impact will be greatly diminished. And that's not why you're starting a nonprofit. That's not what you, why you want to start a nonprofit. You want to change the world. You want to change your community. And the only way community, you know, collaborate, the only way you're going to be able to do that is by collaborating with others with like minds and like hearts. Right? So let's get that straight. Number six, it takes a village. Again, you've heard this before with raising children, with raising a nonprofit, it's going to take a village. You're going to need people, different kinds of people with different types of, of backgrounds and expertise, right? So one of the types of people you're going to need or to identify are people who you can trust to be your board members because you're going to need three to five of them in order to start your nonprofit organization. So who do you know in your circle or and someone else's circle who you're close to that has a passion for what you want to do or has expertise that you're going to need on your board in order to move your work forward. That's going to be dedicated. That's going to understand the severity or the importance of their role and take it seriously and really be ready to partner to help you bring your vision to life. So think about those people. Know who your village is. That's board members, professionals. What are the type of professionals that you're going to need to engage and to have as part of your village, that's your neighbor down the street from you, that has something to contribute to what you're doing? When I say down the street, maybe literally, but not necessarily literally. You know, in your, in your village, right? In your nonprofit village. It could be anywhere. Think through it. Who are those professionals? You're going to need an attorney. You are going to need a, an accountant. You are going to need a nonprofit coach like me. Hey, shameless plug. Doesn't necessarily have to be me, but you're going to need people with professional expertise that you don't have. You don't need to know everything. I don't know. Sometimes we get this notion that we have to know everything. We, we, or we have to go on Google and, and we're going to learn in 10 or 15 minutes everything we need to know because we don't want to ask anybody for help. I challenge you to let that belief go. Release that belief because it will not serve you well. It will stress you out <laughs> and you'll be feeling like you're all alone trying to do everything all by yourself. And it'll be because you chose that and we don't want to choose that. So professionals, you will need some professionals who have expertise in different areas that you don't have. And some of it, some of the work and the services you'll be able to get free pro bono, which is great. Some of it you will have to pay for. And that's okay too. When I first started my nonprofit, I thought everything was supposed to be free. I'm not paying for anything. It's a nonprofit. That means free. That means free, free, free. Everything. Give me your time. Give me your money. Give me your resources all for free because I'm trying to help the world. And it doesn't work like that all the time. Okay. You're going to, you get what you pay for in some instances. Some instances you need to make sure you put aside money or be willing right, to put forth money to bring on a professional to help you. And the best way to make sure that you're bringing on the right professional is to vet them. I know some of you watching this are like, well, I tried that and they, they burnt me. They didn't give me what they said they were going to give me. They didn't do what they said they were going to do. But I challenge you to think through, well, how much did you actually vet that person? Was it someone who you actually went and, and got referrals from, from previous clients? Did you look at their website? You look at their work? Or was it a referral from a friend and you thought you were getting a deal and you wanted to cut corners and you hired this person and they didn't follow through? So, you know, we have to take responsibility for that too. But I say that to say, just be ready 
to pay for professional support and advice and co consultation when needed and when appropriate, but you will also be able to get pro bono support, free support as well. So again, your board members, those three to five individuals who are down for you, down for the organization, ready to do the work, they will be integral in helping you determine who those professionals are, what to pay for, what not to pay for. So make sure you choose them wisely. Also, make sure you identify you're going to need volunteers. You're going to need people who can't be a board member, who don't have professional necessarily expertise, but they have a passion and they're worker bees and they want to help you at events or help you do certain things or ambassadors for your organization. They're going to go out there and talk to people about you and their networks about you. They may not have money to offer them. They may not have any credentials or professional credentials, but they are just as valuable. So just start thinking through, again, number six, it takes a village. Start thinking through, who could these people be, right? So once you start your paperwork and once you start the actual structural process of bringing your nonprofit to life, you already have a good idea and you're not stumped. Number seven, the landscape. So no the landscape. You may have a personal passion to start an organization or to provide a service and may not have the professional expertise or experience around it, but you want to do this work. I encourage you to study your landscape. Study the field. Who are the key people? Who are the key influencers? Who should you know? Who are the movers and shakers in this field? Let's say you want to go into foster care but that hasn't been your expertise. Maybe you want to bring your, your expertise is in the field of, of mental health and you want to cross over into foster care, which is wonderful, which is, and I say foster care because that's my world. That's, that's my connection and my, my give back is, has always been foster care. So, you know, what, if you're, if you're moving over into that field and you don't really know much about it, a lot of your work initially is going to be reaching out to people who do know. Who are the experts in that field? What are the issues? Really know what the issues are and not just your personal issues or the issues that you've seen someone experience, but what in the field have other experts and other people who have experienced, you know, whatever the, the issue is, say are the issues, okay? The people in the community or that it affects, what's really going on in that field? What are some existing solutions? Because People have made progress in different fields, in all fields. There are different pieces of legislation or programs or things that have been introduced to help to meet or to be a solution to some of these issues. But you need to know what those are. So when you insert yourself into certain committees or in certain groups, you know what you're talking about and you won't be saying or, or feeling like you are introducing a solution that has already been introduced, all right? So know your landscape. Know when you know the solutions or some of them that are existing, when you know what the issues are, then you can look and say, what's the gap? Where do I fit in? This goes back to your niche. How can you help build your niche? Fill a need, don't recreate. Don't just insert yourself. <laughs> do your research and know the landscape so that you can be effective in the work that you're trying to do. Number eight, should it be a for-profit? And I'm going to tell you, these aren't in any necessary, any necessary order but from importance. Okay, so this some people might say this should be first. This should be number one. Should it be a, a for-profit? Because a lot of us, we think, okay, well, I'm going to help people. So that means that I need to do a nonprofit. And that's not necessarily the case. For profits, now we're in a, in a world in the age where people are really creative, are combining different things. You have such things as hybrid organizations that are part one, maybe a, a for profit, and then has a nonprofit arm to it. You have social enterprises that are businesses but have or meeting a social need. So really do your research on what are the different types and structures of business entities to see whether or not that's something that if, if it's really a nonprofit that you want to do. Typically when you start a nonprofit, one doesn't mean that the organization doesn't profit. It means that you as an individual cannot profit from the work of that organization. So you can't take whatever, hundred. let's say you raise $100,000. That doesn't go into your personal bank account. That's not money that you would put towards your building your personal wealth. You can't pass that down to your children, that sort of thing. And with the nonprofit, 
technically the organization is not yours. You have a board that is responsible for your organization. The control piece is very different. And if you're a control freak where you need to control everything and you can't bear the idea of someone taking your idea or, you know, ousting you and that's an issue for you, then just really think about the structure of the organization that you want to create. Is it something where your population or your clients can actually pay you for your service? Is it something where you have a product or service that you know other people will want to pay for? If, if that's the case, you might want to do a for-profit. Nonprofit, you can't expect your clients to be able to pay for their services. And not to say that all nonprofits are that way, because some nonprofits have programs or services where you might pay a small fee or something like that. But the goal is not to make money from your clients. Really the goal, you're putting in more into them than they're giving you. And if that's, you're okay with that, then nonprofit is the way to go. So there's other things you should think about. The contrast between nonprofit and for-profit, do your research. Take a look at the different structures, business entities, and see which one is best for you. And there is no feeling bad about any of the, the entities of which one you choose. You can still give back to the world and make money. Okay, you know, that that whole again, depending on what background you have, especially if you're a nonprofit visionary just starting up, there's a bit of of uh, I guess guilt associated with wanting to financially you yourself be okay and be able to pass something down to your family as well as helping people and there should be no guilt or no shame associated with that all right so just think about that think about that so number nine all you need is one yes so we get discouraged. You will hear no a lot, whether that's from potential funders, whether that's from people you've reached out to get support from, maybe potential collaborators or partners. You're going to hear no. Excuse me. People are going to say no to you often. And that's all right, because you don't need everyone to say yes. You just need one yes. You just need one yes. And you need one yes from a partner or a funder that others recognize. So this is also part of doing your research. Who are the people, again, the key players, the key influential people or organizations in the field that you wish to go into that you might wanna consider collaborating with? And again, all of them may not say yes, but all you need is one yes. You may get a lot of no's. And this is not just with nonprofit. This is with business. This is with, again, any idea that you might have. Trust me, you're going to get no's. Develop that thick skin. Remember why you started this nonprofit organization. Remember that your vision really means something. Your vision is yours. It is meant for you and it's meant for you to carry out and keep going. Keep going. Because once you get that one yes, then that's when the, all the other yeses come in. Because sometimes, especially in the nonprofit world, people want to see who's supporting you already. Before they jump in, they're on the fence. They're not going to be the first one in. But we have all different kinds of funders, all different kinds of people who understand that and want to be the first one to help. You've got seed of uh, seed funders who want to give you, you know, don't have a problem with giving you money to explore what you're doing with your nonprofit and they'll be the first ones in. And once they do it, then others will follow. So do not give up before you get your first yes and don't give up after you get your first yes. Never, ever, ever give up. Number 10, listen family, it is a commitment. I know you know that, but I want you to know, know, know that, like to really know that. Starting a nonprofit is a commitment. You have to understand, again, why you, you started this organization, something to draw you and bring you back when you feel like giving up. You have to understand why, remember why you started this organization and started this process. And it has to be about something other than you you know, we got to release the ego <laughs> when it comes to this, but it is a commitment. And a lot of people don't understand there's a lot of administrative work that goes into starting it up initially that can seem overwhelming if you're doing it by yourself. And again, 
I encourage you, whether it's me or someone else, to get and enroll a nonprofit coach to help you engage a nonprofit coach to help you through the process, to hold your hand, preferably someone who's actually started a nonprofit and has grown a nonprofit. You know, sometimes you have people who may go to school for it, may have a certification for it, but have they actually started and grown a nonprofit organization and, and engage a consultant, right? And some you might be able to get pro bono, you know, and some you may have to pay a fee for, but it is worth the investment. All right, because as you're navigating, there's things that you don't know that you don't know and you don't know you don't know it. <laughs> and that's OK. You are not supposed to know everything. There are people out here who know pieces of what you don't and you bring it all together and it's great. But just to let you know, a heads up, nonprofit East, I'm telling you the truth here, that it is a commitment. So be ready to allocate your time and organize yourself in a way that you can commit to following through with the things you're going to need to follow through with your nonprofit organization and the startup of it. Okay. And it's also work. Once you get it off the ground, once you get it established, there are still compliance things, admin stuff. We want to get to the business of changing the world. We like the programs. We like the people, which is amazing, which is going to help your organization to stay around and be sustainable. But at the same token, you also have to make sure your house is in order internally. You know, your tax documents, your compliance documents, your paperwork, you're, you're going to need to over, once you get to a point where you're hiring people, you're going to, that's administrative, you're going to have to oversee that process. So make sure that you get help from someone who understands and knows what is about to happen and how to navigate that whole process. So know it's a commitment and make sure you take care of yourself as part of that commitment because if you burn out, you can't help anybody else. Okay, so those are the 10. I'll recap the 10 things you need to know before you start a nonprofit. One, know yourself. Two, know your why. Three, not everybody will understand your vision. Number four, there is no new idea under the sun. Number five, collaboration is necessary. Number six, it takes a village. Number seven, know your landscape. Number eight, should it be a for-profit? Hmm. Don't know. Number nine, all you need is one yes. And number 10, it is a commitment. Thank you for watching this video and I really hope that it has been helpful to you because these are things that I would have loved to have packaged up just like this <laughs> when I started my nonprofit organization 10 years ago. Um, it would have made a big difference, but I'm glad I went through what I went through because otherwise I would not have been able to sit here in front of you and help you with it. So if you need additional support, let's say you, we're past this point, now you know that you actually want to be a nonprofit visionary. Nonprofit is the way to go. You're excited. Now you wanna get to the business of creating the structure or bringing your nonprofit vision to life, I encourage you to enroll in my Dream Your Nonprofit in the Weekend course, online course, which is $57, a special for $57. You can find it on my website at www.shalitaoneal.com. And in that online course, it tells you everything from naming your organization or naming your nonprofit organization to developing your mission, your vision, your goals, your programming, and your budget. So some things that you know we need to think through before we actually start, you know, putting to paper what it is that that we want to create in this world. That Dream Your Nonprofit in a Weekend course will help you walk through it, and it's complete with templates as well. I don't believe in recreating the wheel. I told you, put some rims on it. So I have templates and worksheets and things that you'll need in order to help you better think through that process. Well, let's say you dreamt your nonprofit. It's already in existence. You're past that point. You don't need that. But what you need is the seeded, right? How do you develop your funders? How do you develop your resources, tangible resources or your, your human resources as well as your the, the money? How do you do that? Well, in the seeded online course, which is $97, a special for $97, 
I will cover everything from first building your foundation for being ready to receive funding because that's important, which is everything from the paperwork that you're going to need to file on down to how to raise at least $5,000 in 90 days, a detailed plan on how do you do that. That's when we start talking about the money, okay? So we've got Dream Your Nonprofit in a weekend. We've got Seed It. And let's say you just need, you've, you've Seed It. You've got to those points. You want to talk to somebody one-on-one. You need some hand-holding and you have some tailored and custom questions. I'm here to help you with that. I'm here for that as well. So if that's you for any of this, visit me at www.shalitaoneal.com. Look at what I have to offer there and then shoot me a message and we can get together one-on-one, -on -one, set up an initial call so that I can help you bring your nonprofit dream to life. I will leave you with this. There is somebody waiting for what you have. I'm talking to you. There is somebody waiting for you. There is a life that will be changed because of you. The time is now. Everything you need is right here in front of you. All the resources, all the networks, everything that you need is right here. There's no more time, no more room to wait. The time is now. So with that, in anticipation for your nonprofit success, I am Shalita, the nonprofit Easter O'Neill, and I hope to hear from you soon.